Good evening, uh, Grace Baptist Church with Chris Hannon, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Glad you could be with us. Uh, again, we have our, structure, our service kind of structured, and it's not, this is, uh, this is us, but you know, God can intervene at any time uh, and change things. But uh, we kind of uh, do it like this Sunday morning, trying to be evangelistic, uh, you know what I mean, do the work of evangelists, and try to reach out to people and invite through our service. Most people, if they're going to visit a church, they usually come on a Sunday morning. Right, um, and so we try to be evangelistic in the message and uh, talking about salvation. But in the uh, um, uh, evening, Sunday evening, it's for the saints. Amen. Something for the saints that we can uh, uh, grow in Christ. Uh, we can uh, be uh, encouraged. We can be exhorted. Right. We can be reproved, rebuked, uh, and long-suffering in doctrine, uh, so that we can be good soldiers uh, for the cross of Jesus Christ and be a benefit to our fellow man. Right. Uh, let me tell you what this world needs. It needs a it needs a saved. Uh, and I know they use the word Christian, uh, you know, real loose. But it needs a saved Christian. Amen. Somebody that's really born. That's what this world needs. It needs a saved Christian. You know what I mean? It needs a sanctified Christian. It needs somebody set apart. Let me tell you something. Uh, if you, to make a difference, you got to be different. Amen. You can't be like them. You can't. You got. You know. You, you got to be different. And and y'all know what happens when you're different. You get picked on. You get maligned and all this kind of stuff. So they need a saved Christian. They need a sanctified Christian. And they need. You know. They need a scriptural Christian. They need somebody study. They need a studied Christian. Amen. They need studied Christian. The Bible says, "But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks us a reason to hope the lie within you with meekness and fear." They need. You know what? They need some answers. Amen. It's, this stuff is confusing. So we study, the Bible says, the righteous study to answer. Amen? Now, uh, I don't need to have the answers to every little, uh, you know, in, little question or everything. But the, the answer is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the answer. The answer is yes, Jesus sir. Christ, right? But uh, the, the, when we walk through this door, God doesn't uh, uh, ask us to check, check our intellect at the door and just come in here and just receive anything, right? Uh, we worship God, the whole man, with our mind, body, soul, and spirit. Amen? Amen. And so we study what the Bible says so we can give a good biblical answer to modern day questions. Amen? Amen. Right? Because the Bible says, study to show yourself prudent unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? And so I know that really helped me as far as a young, the Bible says, I write on you fathers because you've known him from the beginning. I write on you young men because you're strong and the word of God abideth in you and you've overcome the wicked one. Amen? Uh, so that's what we do. We, we try to study somewhat of the scriptures uh, to be uh, edified uh, by it as the saints. Now, uh, um, Mark chapter, uh, uh, as I said, Mark chapter 2, we're going to read an account here uh, that I think would be beneficial. Mark chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. This is Jesus Christ. And it was noise. It's noise that, like they would say today, he in the house. So it's noise, he's in the house, right? Uh, 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 good news travels fast, right? Uh, bad news travels faster, <laughs> I know. But, and straightway, many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not, uh, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. You see that? Uh, notice this right here. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he could do all these miracles, but what did he give them? The word, amen? amen. So he says, verse 3, and they come, uh, and they come unto him, <coughs> bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. That's a uh, word we're not often used, but it simply means born means carry. B-O-R-N-E, carry. Born of four. And when he, they could not come nigh unto him for the press. Now, he's not talking about the news. He's talking about the press, the mass of people, right? Big, a lot of people. The news, by the way, the news, you know, the news will twist stuff so you don't come to Jesus too. Amen. So he says, uh, uh, nigh unto for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the pal palsy lay. Now look at verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, notice, when Jesus saw their faith, right. he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why did this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they uh, so reasoned with uh, them themselves, he said unto them, Why reason these things in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk, but that he may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forget sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately, unlike Job's witness, where you got to, you know, you got to study for two years and all this kind of stuff to, uh, you know, become a Jehovah's witness. Uh, uh, what God does is immediate. Amen. 
What he, what, what he does is immediate. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, Nicodemus, you know what? He could have, that night when he come to see Jesus, he could have got born again immediately. Amen. Amen. Immediately. Just by receiving what he was saying, he could have got born again immediately. Amen. So he says, uh, verse, uh, I say, uh, verse 11, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way in thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, God saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And he went forth again uh, uh, by the seaside, and all the multitudes resorted on him, and he taught them. All right, so they started with the Bible study, ended with the Bible study, right? Went back to the Bible study, right? Had a bunch of hullabaloo, man gets healed and everything else. Let's get back to the Word of God. Amen. A lot of uh, people, they all into the, the, uh, the, the miracles and everything else and, and uh, being fed and all this kind of stuff. And Jesus knows people's heart while you're really following. Amen. Because uh, he'll get really deep and he start getting too deep. Some people, when he start talking about drinking the blood and eating his flesh and everything else, some folks say, oh, I'm, I'm out of here. But the real, let me tell you something, the real believer hang around and say this right. When he looked at, remember he looked at his disciples and said, y'all going to go over? Peter said, where are we going? You got the word, where are we going? Amen. Amen. That's right. I often think about it. Let me tell you as a Christian. But, uh, let me tell you something. It, 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 I, and I post these things, and, and I know they're serene and everything else, and it shows like a cabin on the, the water off in the middle of the woods all by itself and everything else. And I know, you know, oftentimes, I, or at least I am like this. I think, man, what would be nice to just live like that without the trouble off the grid, man. You know what I mean? Get up and read your Bible and pray and everything else. But my brother, let me tell you something. You think that's what God called us to do? How you going to shed light way back in the forest? <laughs> that's, not what he, that's not what he want, is it? Right? How are we going to be salt? Right? What? Out there in the forest? Nope. It's not, that's why uh, Christians sometimes, and you know, we get an idea about this communal living and all this kind of stuff. I said, I've been around uh, Calvary Baptist Church, Brother uh, Harold, uh, Harold uh, Trek and Gas sold a piece of property. And you know what? All of us in the church, we all bought us a piece of property. And we was all going to live over there in perfect harmony. And, and we didn't have to worry about the world's influence and women running around naked because all the women are going to be sisters in the church and everything, all that kind of stuff. Y'all know how long that lasted before we was at each other's throat? I didn't even get a chance to move over there. As a matter of fact, I heard what was going over there. I said, I'm never moving over there. <laughs> People was putting logs in the road before it was all, I mean, it was at a mess. Brother, this is that my brother Baker, and he had to step in for Christians and uh, try to uh, put some of the stuff down because they was uh, because somebody said something or uh, some, it, I was, it was a mess. And let me tell you something. So this idea of us getting off and uh, uh, getting away, and, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, we would be at each other's throat before it's over. It. That's why God said, "Y'all stay right where I plant you." Amen. Amen. That's right. And so, but I want you to know some things. I want you to know some things about this verse. First of all, this man has a sin problem. How do I know that? Look at verse five. Verse five says, uh, "When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Thy son, thy sins be forgiven thee.' Amen. Now look at this. Verse ten. He said the same thing. But that ye may know the son of man, a son of man, that power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy. Right. And so this man has a sin problem. Now I know the devil afflicts people and everything else, but a lot of people's affliction, you know, it's because sin. Sin. There's sin, right? The way, uh, the, way, uh, the way of the transgressor is what? Hard. 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 The way of the transgressor is hard. And some people, you know, they make it hard on themselves. Well, let me tell you, when you do what, when you go in rebellion against God, I can tell you, you're going the, wrong, you're going the hard way. Now, I know, it, you know, sin looks fun and everything, and I ain't going to lie to you, sin is fun. But, but let me tell you something. Uh, 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 the, the, the effects are long-lasting. Amen? The bad effects are long-lasting. Yes, they are. That's the reality of it. It's short-lived. The good times are short-lived. And so, here's a sin problem. And sin with sin comes sickness, sorrow, suffering, shame. But this right here, I want you to notice this right here. He's got a Savior. Amen. Amen. Uh, look, if you will, at verse 1. Verse 1 says, uh, and, again, uh, and again, he entered into the uh, Capernaum and after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Amen. Notice, he would be Jesus Christ. Look at verse 5 again. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy. And so there's, a, uh, uh, there's a, uh, a man who's got a sin problem, but you know what? Thank God a man can also have a Savior. Amen. Amen. 
And so uh, the sin, again, the, this man with the sin problem, he's a representative of sickness, sorrow, suffering, shame. Uh, Jesus Christ, he represents power, pardon, and the promises of God. Amen. And then we just right here, the man has, uh, uh, he has opportunity for salvation. Look at verse 12. And immediately he arose, uh, uh, he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were amazed, uh, uh, were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. Amen. And you know what? The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. I don't care what station of life you're in. Uh, you may have, a, you know, you can be wrapped all up in sin, but you know what? There's a Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And he can save you. And so, uh, I want you to know this right. All, all that around, they, they benefited because they saw this and they all glorified God. Uh, but uh, it started with individuals. Uh, I want you to know this whole event started with individuals whose names are not mentioned. Now, we had this man. We know this right here that he's a sinner and he has the palsy. Is that right? I like what Brother Duke said, the palsy. I'll never forget that. Brother Baker was over there. We was at church service and we was preaching a meeting and stuff. And Brother Duke says, and this man had the palsy. And Brother Baker, all, and, he, and he knew something was going on because he looked over at Brother Baker and Brother Baker was laughing. He said, what did I say? He was looking at all of the house, all of us, what did I say? And brother, he was looking at him. <laughs> and he was like, what did I say? I know I said something. He, and he, <laughs> of course, you know, everybody's talking about, there was pals and <laughs> all kind of stuff. <laughs> he said, and he said, the palsy, he said, the palsy. Uh, they were going down the road and brother, brother, uh, brother Dukes had got this brand new car. Y'all, this is years ago. And they were coming from Pembroke. And Brother Dukes, you know, he's, he's country. He's, I mean, he's good as gold, but he's country. And so he was talking about this new car he got, all the features and everything. And he told Brother Baker, he said, it's got them, them windshield wipers. And he was telling me how the windshield wipers work. And, you know, they, they sense rain and everything else. And he said they, 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 uh, they, uh, 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 he meant to say uh, 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 intermittent. That's what he meant to say. But he said, in a, he said, in, in, intermittent. <laughs> And he realized when he said that, and Brother Baker started laughing. He said, What? <laughs> he said, What? Did I? He said, Don't ever say that in church. <laughs> he said, And so they got to talking because you know what? You know what? I was like, Oh boy, that was something else. But every time I read these passages of scripture, I can't help but think about the palsy. Amen. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, and so I want you to know he, uh, th this story, and I always uh, draw this out of here. There's individuals that are not mentioned. But the, the whole uh, setting here has to do with their effort. Right. But they're not mentioned. And I notice this right here. Uh, the, 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 uh, these, they, it started with these individuals' names are never mentioned, but surely they're known and their names are written in heaven. Amen? Sure. They're not known by us, but let me tell you something. You don't do what they did and you know what? Not be known in heaven. I, I believe their names are written in the Lamb's book of life because of what they did. Amen? Why would they try to get that man to go to such effort? Amen? And so uh, verse 5 says, when he saw their faith. And I think about this time and I wonder if, if the, uh, our desire has anything to do with other salvation. I think it does. I think our desire, not only our desire because we're Christian, but our desire for others. Obviously, they had a desire for this man. Sure, man. Amen? Amen. That is, he's in a situation where he can't walk, he can't work, he can't worship. He's, on, he's flat on his back, right? But there's others that have a desire for him even though he's in this condition. Amen? Amen. See, I think all too, too often, you know, we wait for people to come to us. We wait for people to come to us, but that's not the admonition. Our admonition is to go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, amen? amen. And our admonition is to go into highways and hedges, amen? amen? Go, go. That's what our admonition is. And so we see this right here, and I believe when the Lord saw the extent to which they went to get him, uh, that he honored their effort, amen? And I believe this right here, listen to me. I believe, let me tell you something, we can't get everybody and all this, that, you know, that's unrealistic, but we know this right, I believe God honors our effort. Amen. Because how many times you go out on the street or you go, you know, door knocking or whatever, and people promise they come to church. This is my experience. You go out there, and the people that promise they come more often than not never show up. But then in their place, somebody else comes up, and you know they never heard of you from Adam. Amen. And you say, well, well, and they said, I just looking for a church. And I believe that's God honoring what you did, even though that person didn't honor their their word of coming. Amen. This young man this evening, you know what, out of the blue, right? I, I, I hate to say it, but you know, I'm just carnals all get out. I'm just, I'm shaking his hand and, and glad he, he got my car started. He's like, 
You Baptist? That's when I got spirit. Yeah, Baptist, Baptist. <laughs> yes, I said, church times, right? I said, we're here every Sunday on time and all this kind of stuff, right? As I told him, I said, we treat you so many different ways, you bound to like one of them. Amen. Yes, sir. Gave him a gospel track and all this kind of pump, shook his hand like a pump handle and all this kind of stuff, right? Didn't tell him I was like Reverend Pastor, just Brother Chris, just down to earth Brother Chris. Amen. But I'm just thinking, that young man came out of the blue. He's, you know, and he, and he, hey, this guy inquired about coming to church. I didn't go on the street. Y'all went on, y'all the one that went out there yesterday. Amen. Who came, who came from yesterday? He came today. Amen. That's what I'm talking. I believe God honors our efforts and I believe Jesus honored what they were doing. Amen. And so he's honored. He honored their efforts. When was, and I think about it, when was the last time we really tried to get some under the sound of the gospel? That God might honor our efforts. Amen? Amen. And so three things, you know, I would believe that the Lord saw. First of all, I uh, notice this right here. Verse 1 says there was noise. He's in the house. And I, I, I think, first of all, you know, they saw, they saw their opportunity. Amen? Uh, I, it's, like, it's like when, when, there's, a spirit, when there, there's something going on at that moment. You know this is your opportunity. It's like when something, oftentimes, when something going on in somebody's life, uh, oftentimes, you know, it's a, at a point of need, you know, this is my opportunity to give them the gospel. Amen? And so I see when they saw it was noise, he was in the house. Uh, the previous, and the reason I, I said that, because the previous chapter, if you look over there in Mark chapter 1, look at verse 20, uh, 23 through 26. This is what they're hearing. And this is why Jesus now, he says, he's in their locality, so this is their opportunity. Look at verse, Mark chapter 1, verse 23 says, uh, And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what are we to do with thee, thou Jesus, uh, our, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, shalt thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried, uh, cried with a loud voice, he came out of him, and they were all amazed, right? And so they all saw that. Uh, look, if you will, at uh, verse 31 of the same chapter, Mark chapter 1. Uh, verse 31 says, uh, And he came and took her. This is, this is Simon Peter's wife. Unknown to a lot of people, Peter, Peter had a wife. So he says, uh, uh, And he came to her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. Uh, look, if you will, at verse 32. And even uh, and at even when the sun did set, they brought on him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed of devils, and, and all the city was gathered together at the door, verse 34. And he healed many that were sick with divers of diseases, cast out many devils, suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. You see that? Uh, let's see. Uh, look at verse 37. Verse 37, and when they had found him, uh, they said unto him, all men seek thee. And he said unto them, um, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And what you find is this over and over throughout that chapter, you find the Lord Jesus Christ doing all these things. So when the men hear that he's in their house, their location, he said, you know what? This is this man's opportunity. Amen. It's much like when churches have uh, special meetings and we're going to have, we're going to have revival, three-day revivals. So you understand this right here? You know, somebody says, oh man, I work all week long. I work on the weekends and everything else. And you say, well, maybe you can come on a Friday night. You see that it's an opportunity. Amen? So that's what they see. First of all, they see it was opportunity, right? And so we find this right here. That so when it was noise that he was in the house, they said, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity, amen? Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, last month, uh, you know what, it's gone. Last year is gone. Last week is gone. But you know what? This week represents an opportunity. Amen. It does. It represents an opportunity to tell somebody about, about Jesus Christ, amen? And so we, uh, we, uh, we hear no statement uh, by this man throughout the whole thing. We never hear this man talk. But we hear, we don't ne and we never hear them talk. We want to hear about Jesus talking about their efforts. Amen. Amen. See, they knew Jesus could help. They knew where he was at. Uh, they knew how to get, to, they knew where this man was at. They knew where Jesus was at. They knew how to get that man there. And they knew this was their opportunity. Amen. 
The Bible says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good. Amen. Isn't that what the Bible says? That means, that means when that opportunity presents itself that you can be a blessing, that's when you do it. Amen. And there's no greater blessing than to give somebody the gospel. Amen. Amen. Opportunity. They saw their opportunity. Uh, uh, the Bible says uh, in Isaiah chapter 55, 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Amen. And so that represents the fact that there's an opportunity we have as Christians often that, you know what, uh, for whatever reason we blow, we, we, we think, oh, this is not the right time and everything else. Uh, often people will tell you that at a funeral, it's not, it's, it's not the right time, you know, what, to get into uh, about the gospel. That's exactly the right time to get somebody at the gospel. Amen. To talk about the re reality of dying and going to hell. People don't want to talk about it, but, but that, they have that reality right before them. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Opportunity to knock. The opportunity to knock, they answered it. Uh, again, uh, again, Galatians chapter 6, verse 10 is what that verse I quoted. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good uh, unto all men. That's what it says, unto all men. Then it says, especially of the household of faith. They saw the door was open, and you know what they did? They picked him up, and they headed for it. Amen. Yes, they did. Uh, say what you want. You know, they, they didn't let trials stop them. They didn't let traps stop them. They didn't let trouble stop them. It doesn't talk about anything that they had to go through to get him there. It just talks about their effort. Amen. I know this right here. Uh, the devil is busy. Amen. And sure as we sitting here, and let me tell you something, you don't think this right here, that Bible said we have an adversary, amen? And if you don't think there's going to be obstacles and, and traps and trouble and everything else to get somebody to Jesus Christ, let me tell you, you don't know who you're dealing with, amen? Let me tell you, we got to get past ourselves, first of all. Amen. amen. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, opportunity. Say, which they had an opportunity to exercise faith. There's no guarantee that when they got there and this man was in this condition, this man's in a bed. This man's not hobbling around. He's not, you know, wheelchair. But he's, this man is in a bed, unable to do anything. And so they exercise the opportunity of faith. Amen. That Bible talks about casting our bread on the on many waters. Amen. And so it is with the gospel. You know, we're supposed to be supposed to broadcast it. We have no idea who's going. Y'all know if you pass our tracks for very long, you know it. You know how it is. We got some tracks, and you only got a few left. And you look at a guy coming, and he's like, "Oh, he ain't gonna take one." And you look at him, and you don't offer him a track. He's, "Hey, can I get one of those things?" And you're like, "Oh, sure." <laughs> then the person coming that looks like, "Oh, they'll take a gospel track." They look like they're a candidate for a gospel track. And then we reach out and they're like, get that junk out of my face. He's like, wow, grandma need to get saved. <laughs> That's true. It's the truth. Very true. Truth. And so, first of all, they saw their opportunity. Amen. But notice if you were verse 5, it says, uh, when Jesus saw their faith. Amen. And so they saw, they, uh, uh, notice this right, uh, but there were objections. Notice those people that were there. Remember those, uh, verse, uh, verse 6. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive uh, 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 sins but God only? I want you to notice, I always point out the fact Jesus Christ never corrected him on that statement. He just illustrated that he was God manifest in the flesh. Amen. He never said, oh, that's wrong. No, that was right what they said. Who can forgive sins but God only? Is that right? That's right. That's true. And he just manifested who he was by saying, take it a sick, of, sick of the palsy, take up your bed and walk. If his sins weren't forgiven him, he couldn't have took up that bed and walked. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so he just manifested. But say what you want to. You know what I found? Uh, uh, objections. Now, when I think about this thing, when this man comes here, it says, look at verse uh, um, 4. And we... Uh, and, uh, uh, Verse, well, verse 3, first of all, it says, They come unto him, bringing the sick of the palsy, which was born. So he had to be carried. And then look at this, verse 4. And, and when they could not come, not him for the press. I'll ask you something. Why don't folks not get out of the way? They see this man being carried of four people. Why, they, why didn't they get out of the way? Why? I mean, there's a myriad of reasons why, we, you know, but why? Uh, uh, first of all, you know what, because they, they figured that whatever they needed was, you know, more than what this man. But this is the only incident we see the man in this kind of predicament. Amen. Now, there may be other people uh, uh, with other stuff that was mentioned in verse chapter one. Right. All kind of other stuff. But we see they don't even bother to get out. What I'm getting at is this right here. If you're going to do something like this, you know what you find out? There's always going to be objections. Right. 
There's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be things. Why didn't other people get out of the way? The same reason, you know what? Uh, oftentimes, we as Christians don't get help. Amen? The world ain't, you know, the world's not going to, uh, let me tell you something. Well, you, it's amazing, you know what? Um, uh, you can be just a bad person. Then you get born again and then you try to go back and help your, your fellow, uh, your, 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 your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, and everything else. And you know what? All of a sudden, your family don't give you no help. You ever notice that? They become the, they become the, the greatest objections to you getting somebody else help. Sure. They do. They talk about, oh, no, he's trying to get you in that crazy cult. Next thing you know, you're going to be there. You're going to be going to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. And, then, and you're going to be up there singing the songs and you're going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. They said, and you, you're, you won't be having no fun. Uh, and you just be born as they as boring. <laughs> they just don't know. They just don't know. I, I, as a Christian, let me tell you, my life is not boring. I don't know what life they talk about. My life is not boring. Let me tell you something. Uh, I said to myself today, I said, well, I guess we won't get no rest this Sunday afternoon. And the little voice said to me, you rest when you die. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to notice this right here. Uh, every time, you, uh, this is the honest truth. And I've observed my Christian life. When I really want to do something to take an opportunity, you know what I mean? That I, the devil makes sure this right here. You really want to do this? Then you know you're going to have to jump through some hoops. Amen. Some objections. That Bible says this. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 says. For, and this is what Paul said. For a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. Amen. And that's what you find. You find out this right here. This man obviously needed help. He couldn't walk. He couldn't work. He couldn't worship. And you know what? Every man's case is important to them. But the most important is salvation. Amen. And so you know what these men did? Them Again, you know what they, uh, they did? They, they got past the objections. You know what? And they, that's what they did. You know what they did? All four of them got together and encouraged each other and got this man where he needed to be. Amen. See, you know, brother, let me tell you, we're not in, competi we're not in competition. You know what? Some plant, some water, God gives the increase. Amen. Amen. Too many times I think Christians think, and it, it's true, a missionary and what he's doing, he thinks that's the, that's the most important thing, and it should be to him. Amen. Uh, uh, that local church, wherever it's at, it thinks the souls that are around there in that community, they are the most important, and they should be. Amen. But let me tell you, we are on the same team. Amen. Amen. We're on the same team. We're not against each other. Not, this is not a competition. I'm not in competition against you. You know, we are, we are to complement each other. Amen? Yes, sir. We are to complement each other. Amen? Hey, they ought to say, you know what? The message that we preach about salvation, they may hear it on the street, but they should hear the, the same message in the church. Amen? Sure. They may hear it on the job, but they should hear the same message in the church. Amen? Amen. We work in concert with each other. Amen? That's right. And so every man's case is important, but it's most important is salvation. Uh, disciples, you know what they do? Uh, disciples, they're looking for this opportunity. You know what? Uh, a place where they can get this man some help. Amen? And if you're going to help, you know what you're going to find? You're going to find a lot of objections. You know, people, uh, it's easy. You know, somebody said, well, you know what? Uh, um, uh, how, the, the objection oftentimes is right. How are you going to do it? What are you going to do? What are you going to do to get there? Uh, yeah, but it's like preaching on the street. How many times do you preach on the street and somebody go by and they say, but I'm a Christian, but you know, I don't believe you ought to do it that way. And then you say, well, how do you do it? And then most times, you know what you find? They don't. Well, by going to church. That's not doing it. <laughs> going to church is for us. Amen. That's for us. That's right. I'm gonna well, how do you do it? Well, I do it with love. I do it with love and love and charity. <laughs> love and charity and and feeling and all this kind of stuff. And you, man, uh, and then say, ask him what church you go to. <laughs> What's the pastor's name? What what are we dancing now? <laughs> it's the truth. You're right. I hear it all the time. That's right. And so, understand there are going to be some objections, amen? Somebody's going to always be, uh, why are you doing what you're doing and everything else? Uh, objections, right? But my brother never tells them, that's not supposed to stop you, amen? amen. Why well, if they stop? They got to the, oh man, we can't help the guy. Just imagine, just picture, oh man, we can't, look at it, so many people just drop him. Yeah. <laughs> just drop him. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, buddy. Go. We tried. Right. Oh, Lord. 
there's going to be objections. And then there's going to be obstructions. Look at verse 4. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, now watch this, they uncovered the roof. Now watch this now. Think about this now. And I'm talking about these objections and obstructions. Watch this thing. They the, the, now think about it. They, they uncovered the roof. Now, of course, their roof is not like a modern-day roof what we have, but I don't know what, how it works, thatch work or whatever, but the logistics, the giving, watch this, think about this thing, getting up on the roof and getting him up on the roof with you on the roof. Uh, removing the roof. <laughs> removing the roof, keeping this man on the roof and you not falling through the roof or worse yet, him falling through the roof. Get him up on that roof. And then, watch this now. Now that I removed the roof, now we got to let him down safely in front of everybody. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you how they got that done. They had to work in concert with each other. Right. Amen. And let me tell you about this. You know what? Uh, obstacles, oftentimes, this, right, this, is, this, is, this is my life. This is your life. This is what we get stopped before we ever get started. You know why? Because we start count, we start looking at the obstacle, obstacles from our perspective. Amen. What I can do. Let me tell you something. Your, your, let me tell you something about you. Your resources are always going to be limited. Yes, sir. Amen. Your resource, your, your strength is always going. Your, your strength is always going to be. All this is always going to be limited. This is the point, my brother. Let me tell you something. If we're going to get some stuff done, we're going to have to rely on somebody else's strength. Amen. Amen. Somebody else's grace. Amen. Amen. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And again, we're not in competition. And we, let me tell you something. Uh, it's not my field. It's not my ministry. It's our ministry. Amen. We're going to have to work together. Amen. We're going to have to work together. You can't sit around. Let me tell you something. One God sitting around and said, man, oh, man, man, man how, how are we going to get him on the roof? Some guys say, well, okay, well, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, well, how are we going to get him on the roof? And then somebody come up with an answer on how we get them on the roof. And they say, okay, well, well how are we going to get, get the roof off? And somebody come up with an answer on how we get the roof off. And they say, well, well what are we going to do? Just throw the man down in there? <laughs> Parasail him down in there? How are we going to, you know what I mean? There's always going to be, and it, it's, it's something about this thing, you know what? Because this is, you get the objections from people who even want to come to church, amen? They're like, I don't have anything to wear. And again, let me tell you, God is never looking at what you have on, Amen. Oh, he, that's not what he's, he's all, he's looking way beyond that. And that is what's going on in that heart. Amen. Amen. That's what's going on in that heart. Amen. Let me tell you something. Because when the heart gets changed, everything's outside. Takes, it'll, it'll take care of itself. So he's looking at these obstructions, the roof, the obstacles. And the obstacles, obstacles are not there to stop you. You know what they are? They are oftentimes, I think this right here, there. See, you know, the reality, uh, how real are you going to be? Amen. Yes, sir. It is. Watch this. Let me give you some verses. Look at this. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says this. 2 Timothy chapter 2, look at this. Uh, verse 25. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25, it says this right. In meekness, instructing those that are what? Oppose themselves. See, there's always going to be opposition from the individual, uh, from, uh, from within our own flesh. He says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, a God prevention will give them repentance unto the knowledge of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil and taken captive by his will. You know what? I, I, uh, it's a sad commentary, but I've had individuals say, you know what? God, don't want, God doesn't want me. Yeah. People in jail. People in the homeless shelter and God, God, God doesn't. He's not. God is exactly interested in them. Amen. But the devil's got them where they oppose their own selves. That they are, they they don't mean anything to God. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, they mean their soul means the world to God because His Son died on the cross for their sin. No, it's this right here. Uh, go to First Corinthians chapter uh, two. Look at First Corinthians chapter two. So there's this opposition and objections. Uh, an opposition. And often our oppositions come within our own flesh. Uh, first uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 2. Look at what it says here. First Corinthians chapter 2. You see, you know, I, often time, you know what God wants us out of? He wants us out of our comfort zone. Right. Amen? Amen. He wants out, because when we're out of our comfort zone, you know, we have to rely on Him by faith more. Amen? Amen. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, look at what it says, verse 3. It says, uh, uh, and, I, and this is Paul, now watch what he says. He says, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Now you are overcome these objections, these obstacles, in the power of God. Amen. Again, our strength, our resources are limited at best. God's are not. Amen. Amen. They're not. They're not. Our arguments are, are limited, but God's are not. I want you to know this right here. Uh, go to Philippians chapter 4. Look at verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians 4 and 19. Look at this. Philippians 4, 19. He says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know what that is? Provisions. Amen. Yes, sir. I was thinking about this. I, I, I just to be honest. With you, I was just thinking about this week. I was like, man, a lie. I said, uh, I, I got to get taxed for the vehicle, right? So I thought I'd go down there, you know, maybe pay $20, get my tax and everything. And that lady said $859. I thought she was talking to somebody behind me. Wasn't nobody behind me. First note, she said 839. Then I said, okay, and I, and I pulled out my card, and she said, oh, sweetie, she said, it's all you got is a card? She said, I'm at the, the it goes 859, a $20 service charge. I just got out my car. <laughs> <laughs> Had already, listen to me, I had already, uh, that, well, uh, Tuesday, uh, I guess it was Tuesday this week, went up to, or uh, Monday this week, went over there, uh, or last Saturday, that's when it was, and went over there, and, and remember I told you, I'm thinking, oh, six, seventy, between seventy and a hundred dollars from a battery from a vehicle, I'll go up there, right here in advance, and the guy says, two oh nine, and that's the cheapest one, that's the cheap one. You can get a deal if you go to Costco, I go to Costco, and I think, oh man, such a deal, is that guy said, one seventy two. I said, the cheap one. He said, that is the cheap one. He said, that's with the discount. Because I had my, turned my old battery in and stuff. I was like, then taxes again, it was 192. Right? So 192. So that's 200 plus 600, right? Right? Now, I'm, today, uh, I'm looking at, and if I go home, and I got to replace that battery? I'm, guess what, though? You know what? Uh, I said this right here. I said, I'm just thankful that I can pay these bills. Amen. amen. Provisions. Amen. See, I didn't know this stuff was coming up, but God knew it was coming up. Amen. God shall supply all your need. Amen. See, too many, this, this is what I'm getting, too many times, you know, we, we have these, we have a desire to do something. Amen. That's great and wonderful. Uh, the Bible said the spirit is willing. Amen. But the flesh is weak because we say, you know, I want to do this. I, I, I got a desire to do this and everything else. But then those obstacles, obstacles start coming up. And you know what? It makes us shrink back from our real responsibility. Amen. Because it's going to require more time. It's going to require more effort. It's going to require more resource. It's going to re require more, much more than I thought it was going to be. Amen. Amen. But you know what? That's where it is right here. And that's why you're supposed to lean out into the own understanding. And all that ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct that path. These people saw this. And you know what? They said this right. I don't care what the obstacle is. This individual needs help. And without us, he can, now think about this, brethren, without us as Christians, without us as Christians, and we say that we're enlightened, amen, we say we have instruction from the word of God, is that right? We say we got the inspiration from the spirit of God, we have all, that lost souls without us. Over, not, uh, 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 not overcoming our obstacles, they do not stand a chance. They're like him, they can't walk. They can't worship. Amen? They've been ensnared by the devil. I don't know about you, but chances are somebody brought the gospel to you. Sure. Amen? Somebody approached you. Amen? Yeah. Somebody picked you up. Amen? Somebody probably picked you up literally and took you to church for the first time. Amen. Or, to, or, 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 or got a joke, met you somewhere where you followed them. Amen. They had to. Because in and of our own, the devil makes sure this right here. We're always, folks, always be too busy. Uh, there's always something coming up and everything else. And without a Christian, you know what, working the concert together, 
literally picking them up, breaking up the hermetism, break it, watch this, breaking up the obstacles of reasoning, breaking up the obstacles of fear, breaking up the obstacles of unbelief, that soul does not stand a chance. Right. You got to break it up, amen? Break it up. The Bible says, he said, in, in, in uh, other passages of scripture, he says, uh, go into highways and hedges and compel, to, compel them to come in. I looked at the word compel, it means to drive. It means to urge with force. It means to, uh, 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 it means to constrain or obligate. It means it's right here, whatever you got to do, you know what? I told you about the man who would say, hey, you come over to church, uh, you come to my house and we eat dinner. And people would come over and say, but first we go to church. <laughs> And the last thing I want you to know is this right here. He said he saw their faith. Amen. You know what they were doing? Uh, something we should be, you know what, my brethren? We, we should be obedient to the faith. Amen. Amen. The faith tells us to go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. The faith tells us this right here, you know what, that we're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. Yep. Amen. That's what the faith tells us. The, uh, the, faith, te the faith tells us, go to 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We were, we were here this morning. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 verse 1. The faith tells us, therefore seeing we have this ministry. Amen. This is my, my, my ministry. I was uh, explaining to my uh, nephew here on the way home. I said, I said, uh, uh, this church and stuff, I said, it, it's all, I said, you heard me say it. I said, it's in coming to, your testimony is my testimony. My testimony is your testimony. And you know what? Singularly and together, I said, people you know what they think about our church, what that person, what that person does out in, uh, on their job. And if that's what they think, I say, uh, it seems unfair. It may be unfair, but you know, it is true. Sure. Amen. It is true. It's true. Second uh, 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 Corinthians chapter uh, four, verse one says, "Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, Amen. As we have received mercy, and because watch what it says, we faint not. Amen. We faint not. See what his friends, you know what they say? Oh man, we can't. Sorry, buddy. There's a roof. Couldn't get. You. There's a press. Can't get you no help." It says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. What that simply means is this right here. Our behavior should never defile or harm a man's conscience or be a stumbling block where, you know what, they won't believe in Jesus Christ because we've been a pitiful example. Amen. Let me tell you something. People know you're not perfect. We're not perfect. I, I'm not telling anybody I'm perfect. I'm telling somebody I'm a sinner that needs a savior. Amen. But uh, you know, but I it will be conscious about some of the my actions. You know what? Uh, and what I say uh, uh, speaks volume about what I what I what I actually say about the gospel. Amen. Because we read, we read and known of all men. Notice what he says uh, again. But have things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. Uh, let it be the devil and not be us. Amen. Let it be the devil, not be us. Amen. Go to Luke chapter 14. I want to show you something before I let you go. Luke chapter 14. I want you to notice this man got help in so much. Now think, think about this right. That man got help. <clears throat> that man was brought there. And uh, his friends busted up the roof. Let, uh, uh, let him down. But that man, you know what? He left there under his own power, didn't he? Yes, he did. Jesus said, take up your bed and do what? Go to your house. Amen. And so four men were seen going to this meeting, if somebody was observing, where all these people were, and then five men were seen going back, and all of them were walking. And one of them was carrying his bed. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. See, it's a blessing, this right here. It's a blessing to see somebody that's been crippled by sin and Satan to all of a sudden be Amen. able to walk. And worship. Amen. And work on behalf of God. Amen. See, now that man's life, you know what? He had a testimony before he came there. Now he has a testimony when he leaves there. Amen. And so now, instead of having four people 
doing what they did. Now they got five. Amen. That's how it's supposed to work. Amen. That's how it's supposed to work. But it works like that. You know what? When we exercise corporately our faith working together. Look at Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. And look at verse 23. Luke chapter 14. Verse 23. If I can get there without all my pages falling out. Luke chapter 14. Look at this. Verse, uh, verse 23. Luke chapter 14, yes. Uh, am I got this right? Yeah, Luke chapter 14, verse... It says, um, and, uh, and the Lord said, verse 23, it says, And the Lord said unto your servant, Go into the highways, into the hedges. Here's, here's that verse. Uh, it says, uh, And compel them to come in, that my house may be what? Filled. Amen? You know what the Lord is lo still looking for? He's looking, he looking for somebody, this right here, where he can see that faith. Amen? He can see that faith in that body. Of those people, you know what? And they're willing to work together to bring a soul to Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why, that's why I saw that. And he says, when he saw their faith. Amen? When he saw their faith, then you know what? He worked. Amen? My brother, you say what you want to. You know what? We have opportunity. We got all this uh, uh, voter stuff going on. I don't know about you, but I'm being inundated. You know, if, uh, I don't even answer the home phone. I just let the, I let the little recording get in. And there's always some guy over there, you know what I mean, telling about the other guy's about to blow up the world. And if I don't vote for him, uh, then it's going to blow up. And I'm just like, well, it's going to blow up. <laughs> right? Uh, I'm, I'm, they, these jokers, now they ain't got your cell phones. Right? Now they're calling your cell phones, right? I got a call like 9.30, 9.30 at night. I was like, Really? Now, I said, now, you know what? Now I know I'm not voting for you. I said, even if I was, I'm not voting for you because you caught me too late. <laughs> and I think about people's souls, and I think about, man, they being inundated, they being encumbered with all that. Can you see right there? You know what that is? That's a... Uh, no, that's not... That's a... Uh, that's my wife on the front porch. <laughs> but uh, I see there are people being inundated with all this stuff and being encumbered and everything else and uh, all this kind of stuff. And I said, you know, we as Christians, you know what? I said, we ought to be a, a breath of fresh air. Amen. And say, you know, I'm not, here to, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here to get you to vote for anybody. Everything. I'm here to tell you about Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know what? Uh, he's, he's wanting to give something to you. Amen. Uh, I'm not looking for a donation. Amen. I'm looking for this right to know, are you born again? Amen. Because all this stuff, after it's all said and uh, done. Uh, and I believe we ought to vote for the right candidate. I'm not voting for nobody that kills babies. I'm not doing that. Right. No, I'm not voting for nobody that kills. Kill, no, no, no. I don't care. I don't care what's going on. When you say you killing babies, I, I, I'm not voting for you. Amen. I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. Um, uh, but I know that's all going on, but more than that, this right here. Uh, let's say, let me just, let's save uh, the country and everything else, but you know what? We're going to save it and die and go to hell. Friend, you got a soul. You got a soul, but you better be concerned about it. Amen? And we better compel them to get to a place that's right here that you may, who knows, you may lose the country. Amen? But what should a prophet of man, he gain the whole world, lose his own soul? Or what should a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen? That's Amen. right. That's right. Uh, let's all stand for a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. We'll be dismissed. Uh, let me say, brethren, uh, um, pray for... Um, Pray for my sister uh, about the situation with my, my niece. Uh, pray for uh, Brother uh, Manny, uh, their, their, their meetings. I guess they're wrapping up their meetings. Uh, again, y'all pray for uh, uh, Miss Alice. She put a, a thing on the, uh, uh, her feed about cancer and everything else. And uh, she does have some good news. Uh, the doctor did a test and said that, uh, that she is cancer free. As far as they did a scan on her brain and there's no cancer there at all. Uh, and so they just uh, wondered about that, uh, or just in basically they saying it's a miracle that uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I mean, she had cancer all over these areas, and now there's no trace. But she has uh, swelling in her abdomen because her liver is not working, and so she prayed that they can get her liver working, you know, back working. But she's still not under any uh, any. Uh, uh, misconception about the fact that she is lit she really is dying. Uh, what what treatments they do have is just uh, what you call uh, quality of life. All right. So please pray for her because she's saying you know we're having to make those hard decisions with family. Sit down. She's got two girls and a husband, and 
the reality of sitting down and saying, you know, I'm not going, I might not be here in four months and these things have to be taken care of. We have to address these matters. And uh, you know that would be tough. And I believe she's a uh, saved woman, born again and everything else. Uh, so y'all pray for her. Pray for her and her family. Because if you had to sit down with a loved one, this would be, uh, it'd be a conversation you wish you never had to have. But she's asking for prayer uh, about these conversations that she's going to have to have. Amen. So let's pray for Miss uh, Alice. Uh, this, uh, this uh, lady in Save the, the one one died and they, they tried to save them. One of them made. So pray for that family. I don't All know right. Their name. All right, we will. We will.